button um, on this kind of bench covered in red fabric and put a blanket kind of over his knee. It was like sitting at story time with an old uncle. But there was a problem, a big problem. Bin Laden's handlers wouldn't allow anyone to translate the sheikh's answers. Miller didn't know what bin Laden was saying. And the al-Qaeda leader's monotonal, measured delivery was deceivingly calm. Miller had no way of knowing just how fiery it was. And at the end, I went back to the Arabic-speaking Iraqi fixer who had come with us on the trip. And I said, did he answer any of the questions? And he said, we need to get the tapes and we need to get out. He declared war on America. And he vowed three years before 9-11 that he would kill American civilians. We do not differentiate between those dressed in military uniforms and civilians. They are all targets. We predict a black day for America and the end of the United States. They will retreat from our land and collect the bodies of their sons back to America, if Allah will. Arab modernization was something foreign to the kingdom, primarily due to its uncompro uncompromising faith and inexplicable traditions of an Ibn Saud lineage. But when Ibn Saud gave birth to his second son, who would later become the second king of Saudi Arabia, the kingdom would take those first steps to the first world. Saud bin Abdulaziz al Saud was a reformer in every sense of the word for the country's economy. And while the kingdom started to reformat Mecca and Medina through the Saudi bin Laden group, the largest construction group in the Gulf, they wanted to witness other countries' designers and economic advisors. A road was built from the country's largest province to the Mecca, center to Mecca. This announcement from King Saud was announced during the Hajj in 1947, a remarkable breakthrough which gave a large audience to the world and also would entice a person of interest, someone unknown to the kingdom at the time, but one who would rapidly become one of the king's favorite architectural designers. Minoru Yamasaki was born in Seattle, Washington in 1912. He would later graduate from the University of Washington with a Bachelor of Architecture in 1934. Yamasaki was always kind of creating designs when he wasn't studying engineering and decided to move to a city that saw the birth of one of the greatest modern structures the world had ever seen, the Empire State Building in New York City. Yamasaki enrolled at New York University for a master's degree in architecture, and got a job with the architecture firm Shreve, Lamp and Harmon, which were the designers of the Empire State Building in 1945. His work and reputation for creating heightened structures became known to King Saud, who invited him to the country by the early 1950s. Yamasaki was then granted the contract to design the King Fahd Dahram Air Terminal in Dahram, Saudi Arabia, in which the surprising and enigmatic Yamasaki accepted. In 1961, the project ended and gave Yamasaki the added reputation within the kingdom. The architecture is a blending of traditional Islamic forms with modern theology and technology. It was the perfect complement to King Saud, who saw the goals of the kingdom for the future. By 1964, however, King Saud was forced from the throne and replaced by his brother, King Faisal bin Abdulaziz al Saud, who didn't share that same vision. Yamasaki returned with a renowned vigor and also a surprising gift. The New York City Port Authority would announce to the public that Minoru Yamasaki, along with Emery, Roth, and Sons, the architects of numerous designs in New York City, would construct the World Trade Centers in Lower Manhattan. Yamasaki would later go on to say that his design would be the crushing defeat of his long embedded fear of heights as he planned to design the building 80 stories tall. However, the Port Authority demanded that the towers would have to be much taller. The requirement, according to the Port Authority, was at least 10 million square feet of office space, which had to be met. Yamasaki's design for the World Trade Center unveiled to the public for the first time on January 18, 1964, which called for a square plan approximately 208 feet in dimension on each side, 63 meters. The buildings were designed with narrow office windows, 18 inches, 46 centimeters wide, which reflected Yamasaki's fear of heights 
as well as his desire to make building documents feel secure. In 1971, Yamasaki would design a structure which would be in the honor of the Saudi kingdom. Design was called the Sphere. It was to mimic the Grand Mosque of Mecca, the Masjid al-Haram, in which the Sphere stood at the place of the Kaaba. This design would become of later importance to an unsuspecting figure unknown to Yamasaki or to the world at the time, one who would take offense at its very structure. At the base of the towers, Yamasaki used implied pointed arches derived from the characteristically pointed arches of Islam. According to Oleg Grabar, the great American scholar of Islamic art and architecture, the dense filigree of complex geometries alluded to a higher spiritual reality in Islam and the shimmering quality of Islamic patterning relates to the well that wraps the Kaaba at Mecca. By 1973, both towers were fully completed. With the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan in 1979, a young Saudi began to use his late father's construction company to build roads and dig ditches for the Mujahideen. The company was the Saudi bin Laden group, the same group which hired Minoru Suzuki under the orders of the kingdom. Osama bin Laden, a young problematic upstart in the bin Laden family, had finally found his calling, which was to become part of a cause that would give rise to the religious sector of Islam. Abdullah Azam, a Pakistani imam, would be the single most important figure in the formula of years of the war for bin Laden, and would also have incrementally manipulated bin Laden's mind to incorporate the Pancha Jihad, along with other nefarious Egyptians who would later come along with him. A war which saw no end till the rise of a single caliphate was what bin Laden had wanted later on. Yamasaki, meanwhile, had been given rights to build the Federal Reserve Bank in Virginia. It was built with the World Trade Center in mind, as its structure was 374 feet tall, one of the largest buildings in Virginia. By 1986, Yamasaki had fallen ill and passed away on February 6th from stomach cancer. Bin Laden, however, would begin looking at his greatest victory, the defeat of the, the unbelieving Soviet Union. It wasn't until many years later that Osama bin Laden, now a fully developed terrorist financier, took notice at the Saudis' affront for having the U.S. military based in all of the Islam, the holiest sites of Mecca and Medina, but at a structure which was designed with the Saudi kingdom's approval, which were caught bin Laden's eye. Bin Laden saw the World Trade Centers as not only financial monuments worthy of destruction, but also as an absolute affront to Islam as a whole with the Yamasaki's designs, which has the Islamic faith in mind. On September 11, 2001, the World Trade Center towers were attacked by hijack airliners, which impacted both the North and South Towers by 10.30 a.m. Both towers had collapsed and were gone from lower Manhattan skyline forever. With bin Laden in Afghanistan hiding and Minoru Suzuki, Yamasaki, deceased, only one object would remain barely standing after the attacks had taken place. It was Yamasaki's final design for the World Trade Center, the sphere. It had visible damage, but it wasn't totally destroyed from the debris impact. After its initial recovery, the sculpture was dismantled and sent to a storage near John F. Kennedy International Airport, which was then relocated many times before it was decided to have one final resting place. On September 6, 2017, the sphere was unveiled in its permanent home in Liberty Park, overlooking the World Trade Center site. A testament to Minoru Yamasaki's greatest achievement, which lasted 28 years, but will forever be remembered as a symbol of a world now lost in human memory. <laughs>